The first movie that I wanted to talk about today is a movie that I saw yesterday. It's very fresh in my mind. And it's a movie that has gained immense popularity amongst the critics. And a lot of them, a lot of them say this is the best movie of the year. And so because a lot of people have said this is the best movie of the year, and I got a chance to see it, it was at a screening, uh, not a screening, a showing yesterday. Um, and I decided to, you know, why not check it out? And I did. And so I saw yesterday the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Um, for those of you who, who don't know anything about the movie, uh, I would suggest, you know, skipping ahead to the Miss Marvel Episode 5 review, as I will at least be giving the basic premise. Now, unlike other reviews where, um, you know, I... For, for more of the mainstream things, right? Like like Miss Marvel and like uh, Doctor Strange or, or Moon Knight or whatever. I, I just, I give spoiler reviews. Uh, Obi-Wan, uh, Black Adam, whatever that comes out, Flash, whatever. I will give spoiler reviews pretty much right out of the gate because I'm usually not going to be dropping a review before the movie comes out um, or pretty immediately afterwards. It's just a really quick turnaround. So I'll be, I'll usually be a little bit late. Um, and, and at that point, you know, spoilers, it, it, it's game, right? Um, so, um, Thor Love and Thunder, I might do non-spoiler spoiler just because it's, you know, it's about five days afterwards when the podcast will be coming out, so maybe. But uh, for a movie like Everything Everywhere All at Once, where I'm going to presume that not everybody in the audience has seen it and might just might be watching my, my review, because let's be honest, right? Um, the movie's been out for a while. It's actually almost on streaming, so this might even just be a recommendation to, to watch it on streaming or not. Uh, I think it is on Apple TV, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you, so you might not have seen the movie. I'm going to presume that a good chunk of you haven't seen this movie yet. Um, so I'm going to keep this actually non-spoiler, completely non-spoiler, other than what is revealed in the trailers. Um, so like I said, if you don't want to know the the like anything about the premise of this movie, then I would suggest moving forward to Miss Marvel and coming back later if you're interested in this movie at all. Okay, so as we've seen in the trailers, and I have to say, by the way, I saw this trailer... Um, it might have been Spider-Man No Way Home-ish, Eternals-ish, um, trailer for this movie, and I hated it. I thought the trailer for this movie was one of the worst trailers I have ever seen in my entire life. I, I legitimately thought it was one of the worst trailers I had seen in my entire life. I understand that if, if people don't think the same way as I do on that, um, but I just, I really hated the trailer. Again, what brought me to this movie was that almost all of my favorite critics and movie pundits online have been saying this is one of the best movies of, of the year. And I thought, okay, well, I really am not super looking forward to it on the basis of what I've seen so far, but if people are saying it's good, then I, I will give it a shot. So I went to go and see it, and here's what I will say. Is the movie, first of all, is it, is it good in my eyes? Um, I, I'm not, I'm going to say no, and that's a very complicated no because it almost it almost becomes philosophical at that point. It almost becomes ontological, you know? Like, what it, what is good in this sense? What does it mean for a movie to be good? I'm not entirely sure, um, but I'll, I'll just say up front, did I think the movie is good? I don't think so. Do I think it's bad? I, I definitely don't think so. Did I like the movie? Definitively, no. Again, did I dislike the movie? Also, definitively, no. Do I regret watching the movie? No, I don't. So I wanted to give those qualifiers up front just maybe to kind of paint a, a picture of what my experience watching the film was. Um, let me get the good stuff out of the way before I talk about what I what I think sort of hampered the movie. Um, first of all, the, the concept of the multiverse, we are, you know, I've actually talked about this before with, with people. Um, science fiction fantasy goes through phases. Uh, it just It just happens. Um, as sort of as new technologies and new discoveries arise in the real scientific community, um, and as our imaginations begin, you know, as continue to grow further, um, science fiction fantasy, I don't know if you've noticed, goes through waves. Uh, I would say in the 80s and 90s, we had a lot of talk about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, robots, Terminator, um, we had um, Blade Runner, things like that. Uh, things about, you know, sent sentient robots uh, kind of trying to get us. And and as, as we've moved into the age of series and Googles and Alexas, and I'm sorry if I've activated those for you, um, I apologize. But, um, you know, it's become less of, less of science fiction and more of science fact. Um, in the early 2000s, and, and I would say 2010s, um, we went through a dystopian phase. Um, and again, I think that, as, not to get too bleak here, but as we look at the future of, of, of the world, 
Um, dystopia, you know, it might not be as fictitious as we once thought. And so maybe that's, I, I suspect that's why we're kind of growing out of this, this whole, um, a dystopia phase we had things like the hunger games divergent maze runner things like that um and now in the 2020s and and to be fair to be fair this was a trend uh long before you know secret wars and and crisis on infinite or Earth, infinite earths and things like that so this is not uniquely to the 2020s but it seems like we're going through a wave, wave of multiverse fiction um and i i am confident people who are saying i'm sick of the multiverse already like i you know marvel's overdoing it and whatever whatever um Marvel aside, I, I do believe that this will pass. Just like how we thought, oh, was another YA dystopian novel, and, you know, it, this will pass. Whatever the next phase is, and, and whatever the reason for us passing through the multiverse phase is, I, I don't know, but this will pass. But we, we're getting a lot of multiverse content, and so we, we got, ironically, we got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and Everything Everywhere All at Once, two mouthfuls of a title, titles, by the way, but both dealing with the multiverse. And I will say, the concept and sort of the way the multiverse works in everything, everywhere, all at once is very well done. It is very unique. Um, it is surprising in ways that I actually didn't didn't really think about after seeing the trailer. Um, and I think it's it's better utilized, is what I will say. Now, those people complaining, oh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness didn't even use the multiverse. That's wrong. That is wrong. I... After watching a film like Everything Everywhere All at Once, if your complaint is that they they didn't use the multiverse enough, fine, fair. If you wanted them to visit different universes, fine, fair. I will still contend that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness did exactly what it wanted to do within the multiverse using the multiverse. I, I'm going to say this word so many times, so I apologize, but using the multiverse as just a plot device, and, and, and people might have been disappointed with that, but honestly, at the end of the day, that's what they did, and so like it or not that is what the movie was this film definitely leans more heavily into the multiverse and what the multiverse actually might be and what it signifies and all that sort of stuff and i thought that was great uh michelle yo uh while i'm not gonna say that her performance was lightning i think that there are moments where it is a little, a little goofy intentionally so uh very intentionally so um her she, she gives it her all and I really commend her for that. Like she, I have not seen an actress or an actor give it their all almost you know, as much as Michelle Yeoh has in, in a while. She really gives it her all. And I really commend her for that. I do think also um, underneath this madness, this multiverse of madness, if you will, within this movie, that there is a story there. And um, we're going to transition slowly into the negatives, but staying on the positives, the, the story there and actually, the, the social commentary of the film is, is quite poignant. Um, I wish they had done more with it, to be quite frank, but it is pretty poignant and it is pretty well done. So I will give props to the movie for that. And I think that there are moments of emotionality and mo moments where you kind of feel what the characters are going through. And it, it, it it's good. The movie is also very funny. Um, that was unexpected. Uh going into it but the movie is is funny there is a sequence in the middle that i laughed so hard at um i just it involves um no i'm not gonna say it it it, it uh, there there's another scene actually that precedes it i believe that was very graphic and that i had really i did not expect from from this movie um but the scene after that not the graphic one um, was was hilarious. I, I believe it was after. Anyways, if you have seen the movie, I'm sure you'll be able to guess maybe what it is, but uh, yeah. Um, so there's that. That being said, w the best way that I can describe this movie is that it feels like every single thing that the writers and directors wanted to do, they were allowed to do, for better and for worse. This movie is overwhelming. I left this movie exhausted. I was exhausted. And I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. It wasn't in the cathartic sort of way of like, oh, like, it's over. Like, I feel, you know, the sense of relief and joy and euphoria or whatever. It's It was just, I don't want to watch another minute of this. Um, there is a lot of style over substance, for sure. I don't think it's too much. Sometimes, well, I don't think that it's too style over substance, but it definitely is style over substance, if that makes sense. And it works in most, in most places. Um... But there are some really absurd sequences that just, like, are funny and kind of horrifying, but also just really absurd. And that's sort of what the film, I think, struggles with at its core, is that it's trying to balance a actually very nuanced and emotional story um, with, with, with craziness. 
and it doesn't work all the time. There are a lot of crazy concepts and visuals that you're looking at while trying to process a very emotional scene, and sometimes it works. Uh, there's a very cool conceptual scene towards the end, but but sometimes it doesn't. Um, and that's why when the emotions are supposed to hit, they didn't really hit for me, to be quite honest with you. Um, again, it's a film that... I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly because we got to move on to Miss Marvel. But it's a film that I would recommend only if you really want to see what crazy multiverse and what just just experimental filmmaking looks like. And honestly, I have to say, in certain places, it's very experimental. In certain places, it's very boring um, and very generic. And that's a little surprising to me. I was actually able to guess the story from the beginning. And that's not something that I had expected going into a multiverse film. But I knew exactly where the movie was going from the very beginning which is surprising. Um, and also some of the writing is kind of bad. Um, it's it's like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Man is bad. And that's also surprising. But again, it's not it, it's not an atrocious film. It's not an amazing film. It's a film that I don't regret watching at all because of just the experience of it. But I would never see it again. Um, I would also not really recommend it to many people. Uh, but again, if you listen to the review and you're interested, then go watch the film. I, I don't, I didn't enjoy it, but I experienced it. So, yeah, there it is. All right.